Okay, today we will complete uh, <coughs> um, the lecture that we, the topic that we started uh, last week, and we will start from this example, and then we will have uh, an exercise slightly that is basically identical to this as a procedure, but uh, it will be slightly more complex and with uh, an actual. Uh, even if imaginary user interface. Mm. So yesterday we stopped here. We stopped uh, by speaking about the chi-square test and uh, this simple example in which I toss a coin 20 times and the result of this experiment of tossing a coin is that you have head for 13 times and obviously tail for 7 because the sum is 20 and this is what happened in my experiment and I know because it's what I expect that uh, we have 50% of the time when we toss a coin we should have 50% of the time head and 50% tail so I'm expecting to have 10 times head and 10 times tail and I want to know if my coin that is not exactly 10 times head and 10 times uh, tail is a normal coin or is failed in some way. Uh, so we defined yesterday uh, the null hypothesis that is that the behavior of my coin does not differ significantly from any normal coin and the alternative hypothesis is instead is that the behavior of the coin differ significantly from a normal coin. So my coin is not normal, is faulty, is uh, manipulated in some way to have more time head as a result and less time tail as a result. I want to prove this alternative hypothesis and obviously rejecting the null hypothesis. And yesterday after the class, uh, a, a colleague of yours um, asked a question that was relevant. That is why we have uh, we would say that is different from a normal coin. Why we not say that is uh, my coin is normal and it is different from a faulty coin? So the, the answer is that uh, we can, obviously, in theory, we can have uh, we can hypothesize that my coin is normal and. We would like to say if there is fault, if, if it's different from a faulty coin, from a general faulty coin. Uh, and we, we can do this. We cannot do this in this example because we need to know, for the chi square test, for instance, we need to know the general population of faulty coin. So if I have a general faulty coin, how many times I have head and how many times I have tail? So I don't know because I'm not expert in this i don't have any idea on which is the general behavior of a faulty coin while we know what is the expected behavior of a normal coin so in this case it's easier as an example to have these um, to demonstrate to try to demonstrate if my coin is faulty or not by comparing with the general population of normal coins because we know the expected behavior of normal coins and to demonstrate if this behavior, my coin, with respect to the general coin population, is different or not, we are going to apply this chi square test, again, with the objective to reject the null hypothesis and to accept, obviously, the alternative hypothesis. And notice again that we cannot say how big this difference is. We, should, we can say, at most, that there is a difference between my coin and the normal population of coins, but we cannot say how big this different is. And how to generalize this 13 to any other, for instance, um, faulty coins. We can just speak about that. So the process is, so I think, a four-step process. Yeah. It's a four-step process, quite simple. First of all, we need to calculate the chi-square. Chi square is that one, this, this equation here, that is a normalized sum of squared deviation between the observed and the theoretical or expected frequency. 
So it's a sum for any uh, observation you have, any frequency you have, between uh, you have here O of 1 is the observed value, so 13 for head, minus the expected value for head, that is 10 in our case, uh, squared, divided by the expected value. So in our conic example, we will have just head and tail. So we will have 13 minus 10 squared divided by 10, because it's 10 times, is 10 is the, say, the, the expected frequency, the theoretical frequency of the head for a normal coin, plus 7, that is the observed frequency, minus 10, that is, the, again, the, observed, the, the expected frequency for a tail in a normal coin, divided by 10. And this, if you perform this operation, uh, if I did it right, is 1.8. This is a number. So the chi-square for our case, for our data, uh, so 20 times tossing a coin, 13 times head, the frequency of the tossing is 13 times head and 7 times uh, tail, is 1.8. And this is the first step. And we will cap this 1.8 uh, in a corner because we are going to use it after to understand whether this number is good, is useful for us or not. The second thing that we need to do is to compute the degree of freedom of the chi-square uh, test of our data. And in general, for chi-square test, we can compute the degree of freedom in two ways. Uh, the first one in the slide is the god goodness of fit. So how better, how good is the matches between a sample and the general population to that sample should um, pertain. The other is the test of independence between two uh, variables, two factors, two, two samples or two population. Uh, in our case, and mostly for A-B testing, we have goodness of fit because we have typically one independent variable with two or more factors and so we have uh, we, we computed the degree of freedom with that formula. Hmm? That is the number of columns minus one. So in our case, it's very, very simple. We just have one variable with two columns. So it's just two minus one, that is one. Hmm? So right now we have two numbers, 1.8, that is the, 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 the chi-square um, value, and the degree of freedom for our data, that is one. What we are going to do with this number? Well, we are going to look at table like this that is already done. For instance, here there is a link for which I got this table. That is the a, a table for chi square in which you, you have uh, a certain probability on the first row. And uh, in the first column, instead, you have the different degree of freedom. Obviously, this table here handed at 5, but it could be much, much more uh, longer than this. And here you can also see that, for instance, we move from uh, 0.9 to 0.10, but we can have obviously much more column there with numbers. These are pre compute We just use this as a reference to understand whether these two numbers uh, respond or not to our question. So, then we, we will go back in a mi minute, but uh, we are using that table with the, um, uh, this two number to sustain or reject the null hypothesis. And um, we typically reject the null hypothesis when the probability, the p-value, is lesser than 0.05 or, if we want to be much more precise, lesser than 0.01. So, that is, we are confident that 95% or 99%, 99% of the time, the test results correctly apply to the entire population. So if in, that, in this table we have number, let's say here, around 6, with one degree of freedom, we can say that it's pretty 
it's 99 percent of there is let me say another way there is just one percent of possibility that the number that we have we have that number by chance so we have 99 percent of possibility that that is actually a uh, significant difference so we can reject the null hypothesis and we can 99 percent be sure to say that the, our coins is faulty this is something that doesn't happen because here because we have uh, 1.8 as the chi square test and 1 as the um, degree of freedom so we have to look in line number one so we have to look at this line basically and we have to look uh, 1.8 in this line so where where it is it, it's written but where it is 1.8 in this table it's written so you can read out if you want <laughs> yeah it's between op uh, 0 0.9 and 0 0.1 mm -hmm. so our results is in this big range of uh, 0 0.9 and 0 0.1 uh, it, I, I looked in, the, in a more precise table which much more column here and uh, i can told you that that value is between 0 0.1 that is 2.7 and 0 0.25 so and it's more or less around 0 0.2 as written here so in our case we have the 20 percent of possibility that our results are just by chance it's a case it's, it's it happened but it's not really a for 20 percent of, of time could be just a chance that we get this number and for the 80% of time, it's instead something that happens. So while why 20% is just a small number for a chance, because it, it is 80 versus 20, um, uh, we we reject the null hypothesis only when we have this two number and there is a lot of discussion about 0 0.05 as well so it's better typically to reject on 0 0.01 and there is also a lot of discussion in the statistical community about this uh, p-value as a test of significance but the state of the art is this and so if we either we choose 0 0.05 as a p-value or 0 0.01 as a p-value in either case we cannot reject the null hypothesis because our p is 0 0.2 that is much much more bigger than this two value mm -hmm. so in our example with our data we fail to reject the null hypothesis so we cannot say that our coin is unfair notice that as is written here we can say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis but we cannot say that we accept the null hypothesis so the answer to the question is our coin fair unfair or, or it's normal coin is we don't know we have no idea with this experiment we cannot say anything we cannot say that is unfair we cannot say that it's faulty but we cannot also say with this information with this data that is a normal coin it's just a mystery if you want so we don't know we cannot reject the null hypothesis because again the evidence we have is insufficient for rejecting it how we can solve this problem for instance Yeah, redoing the experiment, increasing the number of frequency. So if, if instead of having, uh, let's say, 20 times, we toss the coin 200 of time, 2,000 of time. Mm? And so we have maybe 
130 time head and 170 time tail. We obviously can say that we have 50% of the general, the total tail head and tail, so we can compute all of this. If we increase the number of these and we will redo all the computation, we will probably have a different result. So, as just as a test, let's try to do this, but I need someone that uses a um, um, calculator. So let's imagine to add uh, a zero. So we toss a coin 200 times and we have head for 130 and tail for 70. And as before, I'm expecting to have 100 time head and 100 time tail. Same as before. Same null hypothesis, same alternative hypothesis, and so on. So let's recompute re this. It's not the same. There is a square. It cannot be the same. Here is 30 uh, elevated by 2 divided by 100. Eighteen. The total is eighteen. Everybody agree? So let's. Yes. Yes, 18. So, degree of freedom changes or not? No. So, where is 18 here in this table? Probably somewhere here. So, it's much more lesser than 0 0.005. So, with that number and with that uh, experiment, we can reject the null hypothesis and accept that our mm, coin is faulty mm? with a, let's say, 99.99% .99 probability, so pretty high. Mm? So we can say that the behavior of that coin is not the behavior of general population of co or normal coin, but it's the behavior of a faulty coin. Okay, any question up to here? Good. So next step is trying to do this exercise. We have one hour, that's more than needed probably uh, to do this. So same process as before, uh, just a different problem. So. This morning I tweaked the, port, the teaching portal a little bit. And so, uh, so this here is a screenshot of a portion of the teaching portal under a, a course like this uh, for, for what I see hmm, as a teacher. So you see the homepage, the news uh, link, the material, the forum link that yesterday you didn't know that exist, the students um, link and the um, upload material link. And this is the current version. And we would like to change just the label here. And instead of writing forum, we were going to write community. And we would like to know if this, just this change of label will le we led or not to have more students using that uh, wonderful function that there is a teaching portal or not. So we, uh, let, let's imagine this. So we have this, this, um, this page, this website, it is done, and we 
create just a, a copy of this with a, this very small difference that is community instead of forum. Uh, small change. We deploy both versions on the web <laughs> under didattica.polito.it. And this is obviously an imaginary example just for you know, teaching purpose, it's not real. And uh, we would like to know to do uh, online A B testing, for which we have these two versions deployed. And we randomly show each student either the original version or the alternative version. So we would like to have more or less 50% uh, of students using the teaching portal in this version and 50 in the other. But notice that is a random assignment because we want to, we, we don't know, we cannot control the population, we cannot select people exactly because who knows? Uh, who will uh, log in the, in that specific day when we are conducting the experiment on the teaching portal or in the week we are conducting the experiment. We cannot say, ah, yes, you are uh, suitable for this and you are not. You are teaching, yeah, it's only for students, but you are, uh, I don't know, computer engineer students versus a uh, design student. If there is some difference in this population, we don't know. And we don't want to control it this way. So we randomly assign. Uh, and this is important to avoid bias. So we assign some student to that randomly and some student to this. So student log in on the um, teaching portal and by, by chance they have either one version or the other one. And we are interested in measuring what they call here the engagement rate. That is how many students click on that link, open the functionality, just the number of clicks. So we deploy this. Uh, how we can collect this data, if we are going to do this really, how we can collect this data, for instance, in a website. You have a website, you deploy it on the web, and you want to collect number of visiting, clicking. No, a JavaScript variable that uh, counts. Uh, no. no. JavaScript variable in client side, it's client side, so not really useful. You can use logs, yeah, but logs, you log everything. There is something more, it's already existent, is something that you plug in your website that give you a lot of information and it's powered by Google. History is again, it's browser based or if you are logged in in Google, but not. Never heard Google Analytics. You have Google Analytics, you can uh, add your website to Google Analytics, add one excerpt of code on your web page, and they collect a lot of analytics for you, mm, starting from where is people from, at which time they log in, the most frequent page, and how many times they click on a single link on all the website. So from that, we can extract just the number of people clicking on forum, and the, num the total number of people visiting both versions and the number of people that clicks on forum among that uh, and on community among that. Mm -hmm. Because we, here we can have also people that is going to this web page and clicking on material and not on forum or in the same way in the other, in the other, in the other side. Mm -hmm. So we are not forcing or indicating people that you have to click on it. Just observe how people behave. And if there is a difference in behavior here. So we deploy this for, I don't know, one week, six weeks, doesn't matter. Obviously more time, more data. And we um, came up with this number after looking at Google Analytics. Um, so we have that in the first case, the first, the, the original version we had in our observation, 120 students in total that not visited, in, let's say, in that day or in that two hours, because it's a small number. Let's say in two hours of experiment, we have 120 people that log in into uh, Portale della Didattica in that page. Of that, 100 didn't click on forum, 
So they do other things, download material, look at some news <coughs> or whatever it is, and 20 of them, that is a hugely number for, for that function uh, <laughs> right now, but it's, it's an example, it's imaginary. Uh, 20 people uh, click on forum. That we don't know them. We are not interested in knowing what they did there. Maybe just click and after one second they go back. So this is something important to consider, but here let's stop to the clicking. And in the other case, in the alternative version, we have instead 100 visitors, so 20 less. But you know, it's a random assign, so we cannot control exactly. Uh, 100 uh, people, uh, 70 of them didn't use the function, didn't click on community, while 30 did. So, what do you see? It's better community or better forum, or it's the same? Just looking at this, opinions. How many better? Better community? Yeah, almost everybody. And yeah, it seems it seem so. Hmm? Because this is the 30% of the total, because yeah, it's 100 people, and this is 17% of the total. So 30% is better than 17. So community is clearly better. We have done. Yeah. We revamped the function of teaching portal, but not so fast. Uh, because again, Let's try to understand, as in the case of our um, of the coin, if this is something that just happened by chance or not. So you know, 200 people, 200 students, uh, or better, 200 visitors. We don't know. We, we cannot know. Maybe if there is the same person that log in multiple times in that hour or not. So. 200 visitors, 220 visitors, are not the general population for the teaching portal. Hmm? Polytechnic has much, much more students than 200. Hmm? That you have in computer engineering in the master's degree, one class that is 300 people uh, as a first uh, enrollment, so 200 is less than that class, only for computer engineering. So that's amazing for the entire polytechnic. <coughs> so these numbers are just by chance, if we already do the experiment, how confident we are that we can have the more or less the same percentage of results. So 30% versus 17. So we can redo this another time, another time, another time for longer period, shorter period, in the summer, in the exam session, during lecture, in different moments, because you, know, you are using the, the website in a different way. Um, that page you maybe don't use the you probably will not use the course the course page when you are going to do the, your thesis because you are not interested in you, you passed all the exams so you can you didn't click there you will in the end pass all the exam um, if not yet um, that, yeah eventually you will not have a look there and eventually much more eventually in the future you will not even open that page anymore good for you and so but right now yeah we have this question what is this number just happened by chance uh, or not because you know we had quite few visitors and we no, don't we cannot control how many people who are these people and so on. so let's use as before the chi-square test to understand whether this difference is significant. So we don't, again, we cannot say how much this difference is significant, just to say, okay, this is something, um, there is a significance, this difference. And so if the, the new version is actually better, the version with much more number, 30% is actually better than the other one for that specific uh, scope. So let's write, it's already written in the slides, so don't look at it. Let's write a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis here, which is our null hypothesis. Than community. 
community. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Using community has no difference in this engagement rate, in the number of click, in whatever you want, than using the, the, the original that is forum. And the alternative hypothesis? There is a significant difference. So notice that I, I oh, sorry, let's put here. Um, uh, we, we use significant, not just because it's a term. Yeah, it's a term, uh, obviously, but um, because statistically, when we say that we reject an null hypothesis with p my lesser than 0 to 0, 1, for instance, we said statistically that that difference is statistically significant. So this significant is in the statistical sense. It's not just a big difference. It's not just an important difference. It's really a statistically significant difference. So we are, indeed, we are going to use the k square test, it is a statistical test, to demonstrate this significance this difference is statistically significant. Mm. So this significance is here for, for a reason. It cannot be put big or big enough or important, but just significant that way. Mm. So yeah, the null hypothesis, uh, the one you, you told is perfectly correct. The, another way to write it is for instance, that the community link will lead to no significant change in the number of students or visitors using the functionality clicking on that link versus the original forum and the alternative hypothesis obviously the, the opposite uh, and we are we would like to know if this community link we hope that this community link we led to significant uh, more students using the functionality to a significant difference hmm? in this case because otherwise we will not create this second version in the first place so we know that we have this data these are exactly the same data as before i just perform um uh, sum here row by row hmm? so we have 30 people click 30 visitors clicking on community 20 clicking on forum and so in the end in our overall population in our test we have 220 visitors 100 plus 120 and of these 220, 50 used either one or the other link, while 170 didn't use anything. They use any, something else, they just look at the page and log out, we don't care. They don't use neither forum nor community in either version. So these are the, the distribution, let's say the proportion of our population. Students that use the functionality whatever it's called forum or community are 50 and the other one are 170 the total is 220 so overall we uh, conduct an experiment with 220 people or visitors or sessions it depends on what you're measuring hmm? and split in this way so we know from the coin experiment that we should have uh, and from the k-square formula that we should have an observable measure that is this one this is something that we observe measured number of clicking and the expected the theoretical result so in, for the coin it was quite easy because it's 10 times head and 10 times tails here how we can hypothesize an expected outcome of this experiment so if there is no difference exactly no difference and we still have 220 people in the experiment. Of them, 170 didn't use the functionality because there's no difference in the name, so no, don't matter. And 50 of them use the functionality, whatever it's called, because it's not difference. Which are the proportion? How we, we, what can we add instead of 30 and 770 there? And 20 and 100. In the case in which the null hypothesis is true and there's no difference, Situation. 
uh, I missed some point. So you're saying instead of 70, you put uh, what? Why 110? Where do you come up with 110? We, we should maintain, we have to maintain this 100 here and this 120 because we don't want to hypothesize what happens if we have a heavily distribution of people. We have this distribution of people. So we would like to say, if we, the null hypothesis is true, and so there is no difference between community, forum, or whatever you call it, it no, doesn't matter the name, hmm? uh, we still have 100 people in the first condition, in the first version of the interface, and 120 uh, people in the second condition. As before, we had exactly in the coin 10 time head and 10 time uh, tail because we have overall 20 uh, toss of coins of the coin. Here we have in the teaching group 100 and 120. What we need to, to write here is some number uh, that replaces 30, 70, 20, and 100. Because obviously, the total should also always be 100, 220. Uh, for student didn't use the functionality 170 and 50. So this, the sum of the row should be always this, and the sum of the column should be always 100 and 120. We're hypothesizing what happens if the same students act in the same way, proportionally, more or less, but they exa have number uh, that doesn't satisfy, that satisfy the null hypothesis. So if, for as an example, if we have 100 and 100, we can expect, it's an example, it's not the answer, we can expect maybe 50 and 50. And 50 and 50, if we have 200 people here and 100 people here and 100 people here. So evenly distributed, this is not demonstrating the, the, the null hypothesis. So now we don't have 100 and 100, and we don't have 50% and 50% for each row, but we have 30% in the first row and 70% in the second row in the first column. And in the second column, we have 17% and a bigger number in the second cell. So it's not evenly distributed. How we can create a new table and replace the number with this no difference? Do you want the same percentage No, because we have 100 people here. So if we write 25, 25 is not. The total should be 50. So, it's only about students with full functionality, uh, 25 for community and 25 for Corona. And we cannot, because, yeah, the total is 50, but also this total should, should remain constant. So if we put it 25, here we have an imbalance with respect to the norm, to this, this because we have multiple factors to consider. So it, it's, it's, it's easy, it, it's a proportion. 50 uh, equal is stay to x as uh, 100 stay to 220 that is the total in the first case hmm? the, the proportion that you write uh, in math in the middle school or high school or whatever it is hmm? so we say that we want to, to to fill the the gap we have 50 and we would like to have to discover the other number that is the same proportion than 220, that is the total, stay to 100. That is the expected total, the total visitor. So if we perform this computation, that is quite easy again. We have the 22.7 um, students use the community functionality if the null hypothesis is exactly demonstrated, and 27.3 use the, the other um, button and 77.3 and 92.7. If you sum up each row and each column, you just have 50, 170, and 100, and 120. Exactly, it's just a proportion. To have, to maintain the proportion among these two and to maintain the 50% among each column of number, more or less.
because we have a not fair a not well distributed population we have just more people from one side more people on the other a different percentage of people that use the functionality versus people that doesn't use the functionality so we we have to consider this we cannot say just 50 percent 50 percent so this is the expected number so we can compute the yeah so if we remove the the calculate the, the formula it's just this number obviously we will never have this in real life how can a person click on a a, a number of person click on a button 22.7 time of time it's more than half click it doesn't make sense but this is just the expected what we are expecting to have so probably if we have 23 and 28 will not be a difference and this will be uh, more realistic but it's fine for for computing k square because we have to look in this table and perform some operations so this mm, dot something are not really uh, significant doesn't change a lot so let's try to you you can try without looking this to compute the chi-square hmm? as before so uh, before a question uh, the degree of freedom which is the degree of freedom here wow well, still one okay, st we still have a versus b community versus forum so the degree of freedom is one so in that table we are going to look at the first row the k square it's a little bit longer than before to compute because remember we have observable number in the first case minus expected number in the first case squared and divided by the total number divided by the expected number plus expecting observer case number in the first in the second case minus this divided by the squared and divided by this plus we have one more row here plus the observable number in the other case in the student didn't use the functionality minus 77.3 squared divided 2 so 4 uh, sum basically So let's let's try to do the, this computation. So we will see if I did right or not. So if you need the formula is still this one.
So the number is Something close to that. Depends how you uh, round the, the decimals. Do you agree that is 5.55.56? It depends how you round it. Yes. So again, we calculate this, you calculate this, perform this for operation, this, the sum is 5.5. .5. The degree of freedom, we already know that is just one, two columns, and we are interested in the goodness of fit for general population. We would like to say that if we get 1,000 people, the results still hold. So it doesn't matter to redo this, this experiment again and again and again with other people or with the same number of people, much more, much more people. We just would like to say, if we reject all hypothesis, this result hold with a, scene, with a certain probability and so we can have a look at this 5.5 .5 or 5.55 in the probability table and we found that is here it's a little it's bigger than here but it's around this 5.024 so our p is 0.025 So there is, which is the probability to have this result by chance? Before it was 0 0.2, it was 20% of po possibility to have that result by chance. Here is 0 0.025, so the possibility is 2.5%. If we select a p value as a uh, threshold, as a p value 0 0.05, we can reject a null hypothesis. If we select 0 0.01, we cannot, but we can choose the, the first option because it's easier. And we can reject a null hypothesis. And so we can say that the imaginary community link. Uh, leads to significant more students using the functionality, just the name of the link. Mm -hmm. And so we can, you know, if you are interested, we should deploy our website, change the website. If you are interested in pushing the, that functionality, uh, changing the, uh, the name of the link from forum to community, because community create more engagement to clicking that page. Then maybe in one month, they, nobody will use actually the forum, but this is another problem. We are just comparing the, um, the clicking of the link. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I would like to just to say one other thing, because you can, so before we had a, a small number of items that we didn't reject the, the null hypothesis, and then we multi added a zero, so from 20, we moved to 200 and we were able to reject the null hypothesis. Here, we had similar number, 220 uh, visitors. So a, a wrong assumption should be with such number, we can always reject the null hypothesis because chi because square is always big and we can have a high um, value. Mm -hmm. So apparently could be this. It's not this is the case, obviously. So uh, this number was put here just to have um, uh, a sample to reject the null hypothesis. If you move, I think, uh, five students, ten students in the community here, so instead of 30, you have 25 or 23, and you put these uh, students in the below, in the 70, so 25 versus 75, or 23 versus 77, you should not be able to reject the null hypothesis. With just this small change, obviously, also this number change a little bit, because they depend. Um, no, no, it's not real. That number change a little bit. This number doesn't. So if you change just by people clicking, not clicking the, the community. So we have 25 versus 20. 
with this population, 100 and 120 people, we just you shouldn't shouldn't have uh, uh, the possibility to reject null hypothesis with just the five click less. So. Uh, that's, that's also why the case square doesn't say how big this difference is because with just five people uh, if I properly remember you don't have uh, you cannot reject so it's probably we can imagine that this difference here is very very small right now we can imagine we cannot say from case square we should use other statistical tests to demonstrate but we can imagine that if 25 is not enough to have a significant difference and 30 is in this quite small population this is 100 people so probably uh, this is a very very small difference with this number and this population but still it's all it's statistically significant so, so we can say that uh, moving to a community link instead of forum could increase the number of click and engagement in general for all the students of Politecnico with a good pretty good pretty high probability Okay, any question up to here? And just to give you a real world example of this, uh, this number, right now the website is not really uh, uh, so this A-B testing is something that, just to give you a, an example, that is documented on the internet. Um, so for, for the Obama campaign in the United States in 2008, they performed a A-B testing with general population in the United States. They had this website with sign up and uh, an image, and they create different version of this website that are not um, seen here anymore but they perform for you know 2008 the internet 11 years too much um, four button variation in color or text and missing plugin some media <laughs> <laughs> because as before it's the internet um, some media variation so basically they randomly assign people to uh, i don't know this website with instead of sign up learn more this website with another picture uh, this website with another picture and another label and they perform all these experiment in couple a b testing and they collect data as analytics as we did with google analytics or equivalent and in the end they perform some computation probably also the chi square and they change uh, the website in this way because this learn more instead of sign up and this image generated more engagement on the website more people sign up and probably the next step is uh, give some money to the campaign so it was important for for them to to sign up to have people, more people sign up to create an engagement. So this was a, a real world experiment or A-B testing with, you know, K-square, whatever it is, uh, done their world in the United States in 2008 on the internet that lead to these two small changes, just another picture and uh, a different label on the button. And this statistically increase the number of people that sign up in this website as again since campaign are for getting money and voters here you probably are interested in getting more people voting for you and more money for your campaign so it was really important to have a lot of engagement here not like our community versus forum example but uh, that's the point so if you if you look for if you if you want to read this if you look for uh, Obama campaign A-B testing they did this in 2008 and they did something similar also in 2000 and since it, it worked it, they did it, something like this also for the re-election in 2012 mm. but this is just just an example um, I think that also Facebook I, I know that Facebook did I don't know 
they for for advertisement they suggest you to do a b testing but uh, you know also facebook sometimes do a b testing for their users in that way to understand whether it's better to have a menu on the bottom on the top or icon versus label or something like that because it's quite a cheap way to reach uh, a large number of user for tweaking some feature especially if you are interested in, in having much more engagement uh, from your user like you know social media is their work or a campaign for a presidential election and so on just to give you two links to real world example any question again so um, even if, if it's not 1 p.m uh, this close the the class this close the course also for the theoretical part we still have one lab tomorrow uh, at 10 in uh, labinf that is again supervised work group and the simulation of the exam tomorrow after the, la the lab in room 13 s uh, that will be a real simulation mm -hmm. so we are going to give you the text you are going to to do the exam probably in this case with open books or whatever you want if, if you can do without it's fine but probably for now it's better to have books and then we will show you the the solution uh, of that exam and we'll also publish the solution on the web uh, on the website so that uh, if you cannot be there uh, you will get at least the question and the solution yes during the exam you can use calculator if there is some question like this i don't know computer k square test given to interface computer k square test uh, you can so probably it's better to have uh, a real calculator not the smartphone or the tablet um, or a computer but a real you know scientific calculator um, or also not scientific calculator something to, to perform some addition and uh, squared and division and you cannot use any computer books whatever it is we will provide you so if there is a question about k square we will put the table uh, the probability table in the text of the exam so that you can use this any other question about this course not about other courses <laughs> <laughs> no good ah polytechnico told us to remind you to fill the cpd so please fill the, the cpd be kind when fi filling the cpd um, okay so that's it for today we'll see you tomorrow and uh, if you have another question i can stay here still 20 minutes uh, otherwise have a good lunch and afternoon